Rod, they're getting set for the first and any rhythm. The favourite at two dollars fifty. Streak four dollars seventy. Eight sixty. Kilkia. Eight thirty. Doctor Dazzle. Kilkia sweating quite profusely, having his first start for Bart Cummings today. Now Vanderhaar takes the uh, number nine stall. Any rhythm alongside it in eight, and they're set to go first on the program. Off they go. Any rhythm, Dr. Dazzle, both away quickly from Streak and out OK was Vanderhaar near the outside. In behind those, Kilkia and Coronation Jubilee. Feliz Navidad is coming across, followed by Wage. And closest to the middle of the course at the moment, Amelfi Drive. Heading to the 800 metres, Vanderhaar found the outside rail. Just in front of the grey, any rhythm, Dr. Dazzle is up to third. They're followed by uh, Amelfi Drive out in the middle and Wage just inside it. Feliz Navidad is just off the pace and so too is Streak, followed by Coronation Jubilee and Kilkia is last of the pack. Coming towards the 400 metres, Van de Haar and Any Rhythm are the two leaders with Dr Dazzle. Wage a little wider out coming at them. Uh, Amelfi Drive under pressure. Kilkia is getting a run inside it and then Feliz Navidad. Streak is a good way back under pressure. Nearing the 200 metres now. Van de Haar under the whip. Any Rhythm claiming it now. Then Dr Dazzle. Kilkia is starting to come home well. Any Rhythm and Van de Haar are the leaders 100 metres to go. Any Rhythm ahead to Van de Haar. Any Rhythm them starting to pull out a bit too much and any rhythm beat van der haar felice navidad two links away got up for third from dr dazzle kilkia who just weakened on the run the last bit then coronation jubilee wage was next streak never came into it and amelfi drive was last to greet the judge in the first event time one three point three and a pretty comfortable victory for any rhythm making it three wins in a row now his first three victories all came at maui then he stepped out at sandown where he led all the way and he's pretty much controlled this race for the entire journey in beating Van der Haar, number four second. And uh, the third placing should go to Feliz Navidad, time 13.3. There it goes in the frame. Numbers official are one, four and six. Just proved a bit too good, any rhythm. Just his uh, second start at the track. His only other run was in the 1,400 metres size here, which proved to be a bit too good for him. But he struck a real chord at the moment. And Greg Childs uh, posting another victory. That's his fourth. He's had at least one, one winner over the four days of the carnival. In fact, he's had exactly one winner on each day. He started the day pretty well. Any rhythm, scoring a strong, solid win. And I don't think it was ever going to be beaten. It was always travelling pretty comfortably up on the pace. Van der Haar in the pink uh, colours there under the whip. Childs didn't go for the whip until the last little bit, but uh, he really was quite comfortably holding Van der Haar. Feliz Navidad ran on well. Dr. Dazzle was a weakener. And the streak was a disappointment. Well in the market, but was always well back. Might be better for that first up uh, outing. So one, four and six. Favourite getting home in the first. Uh, Rod, so the uh, putters here are pretty happy. Let's hope that continues the trend. Race two coming up the Maribyrnong plate for the two-year-olds at 12.05. Hey Greg, long way to go. Another eight uh, at Flemington on the final day of the carnival and there the grey any rhythm for anthony cummings uh, race one off the fence we said earlier the outside is the place to be for the straight racing today it was cantering uh didn't find all that much when when he went for it but still it was always going to win uh, any rhythm at 250 and 130. so the punters on target early in the day on uh, the flemington program set the break test rossa just uh, locked away now, and the favourite is set, so they're all in. Maribyrnong plate. Cloister getting a bit uh, edgy, shifting around in the gates there, and attendant is with her. Off they go. Testa Rossa began well, so did Charm Scene Land. Real Jester began okay towards the outside there, and uh, they're, they're all going to come to the grandstand side. Mondevert dropping in behind them early. Big Tide is showing pace with Irish Janty coming across over near the outside. Geiger Wonder got a little check there. Prince Ben Barra in the red is the one coming down closest to the middle of the course. Now it's Testa Rossa near the outside rail. Real Jester going up to join it. Big Tide and the gold cap is running third. Just behind those is Irish Janty in the yellow blinkers, followed by Gotham Ruler and the red blinkers a bit wider out. Just behind 
behind these horses then in the field. Big Tide is under pressure. Uh, then Walk the Wild Side running on fairly well, but Testa Rossa and Real Jester have broken away from Walk the Wild Side at the 200 metres. Testa Rossa out near the rail in front of Real Jester, doing better than Testa Rossa now. Testa Rossa drawing away from Real Jester, Walk the Wild Side, and Testa Rossa's going to make it uh, two out of two, and Testa Rossa wins it well from Real Jester, Walk the Wild Side third, and then Charm Scene Land, so Peter Hayes second, third, and fourth. Back behind them, Prince Ben Barra, Cloister, and they were followed further back in the field by Irish Janty, Big Tide, Gotham Ruler, and Geiger Wonder, one of the last to greet the judge. Run a bit of time here, these two-year-olds, 56.6. That is, with an assisting wind. Now, Mondavert, what's happened? It hasn't uh, completed the course. Number one, Mondavert's been pulled up near the 500-metre mark. All Testa Rossa in the run home, numbers are 2, 10, and 11. Testa Rossa. Heavily supported, led virtually all the way. Real Jester tried hard to go with the Tester Rossa, but he was travelling by far the better a long way from home and he's drawn on for a comfortable win. 56.6 the time. 2 10 11. Tester Rossa is by Pirigino, who's a three quarter brother to Sadler's Wells. This is his first group that have gone to the races here as, as two year olds. He won on the uh, heavy track when the rains came, they weren't keen about his chances there. Uh, but he'd worked well. They were keen before the rain came, and uh, when it came, there was a little bit of uh, lack of confidence in the camp, and he still won uh, here today. There was strong confidence about him, and he was heavily backed to run the favourite. Real Jester running second. Hayes' team have really had a great run in this race. Won it the last two years with Lady of the Pines and Catnipped, and before that, they'd run second five years in a row. David with four and Peter with, uh, with one second. One of them, uh, in fact, they lost two of them on protest. So they've always produced one, but they've bumped uh, into a smart one on this occasion in Testa Rossa, who's proved too good. $3 and $1.50 for the winner. $1.80 for second. $2.90 for third on 2 10 11. Quinella has returned $7.80. The trifecta $125.30. And the first double numbers, one and two, has paid $10.50, $10.50 for the running double. Eddie Cassip coming back. Dean Lawson, the winning trainer, trained on the track here. And Tester Rossa straight to the front and was never going to be beaten. That's Eddie's second winner over the uh, four-day carnival here. Good effort by the second horse, Real Jester. Big uh, lump of a horse and he'll keep improving and walk the wild side running on fairly. And fourth, Charm Scene Land. So Peter Hayes running second, third and fourth. Third coming up. Bigger field in this one. This is uh, Trower's Arrowfield Matriarch Stakes. Take out numbers 2, 18 and 19. 17 risky is now Eddie Wilkinson. The blinkers come off number 8. No mystery. Second on the card. Nick numbers there at 2, 10 and 11. Good victory to Tester Rossa. Yes, after winning the debutante stakes at uh, Caulfield, as you mentioned, Greg, on a heavy track. Put two on in today. They paid plenty of money for the second horse. Real gesture, I think about $150,000 and walk on the wild side. For the Peter Hayes team into third spot, race two, one by number two, Testa Rosso. OK, Ramwick in Sydney, 14 minutes before the first bit of time to... Things well behaved within the flesh. And now the light is switched on and they're all set for the first. Blazing Jester, gate two, the favourite. Starter grabs the button. Racing. Blazing Jester near the inside jump fairly. Chosen Valor out wide away quickly, a quiver major point and Blazing Jester going smartly now. Foolish Things not far away, majestically going up on the inside of stage play. Tundra crossing, two links, Vanilla Bean. Manitoba getting back, two links to Denmark and two links to In the Flesh. At the 600 metres mark, Chosen Valor in front with Blazing Jester rushing up to be second. Third deep out on the track, major point. Two links, a quiver tracking them. Majestically on the fence, a link stage play. They were followed by Foolish Things, Vanilla Bean and Tundra crossing. Heads the others with Manitoba. In the home straight now, Lee's about to call on the favourite and with the baldy face, Blazing Jester's moved up on the outside of Chosen Valor and they've raced three lengths to a quiver running on majestically back to the fence making ground and further back stage play Blazing Jester hands and heels Lee at the 150 kicking again Chosen Valor Blazing Jester just in front Chosen Valor's coming again a quiver and majestically steaming home the fence Chosen Valor in front majestically late with a quiver I think Chosen Valor from either a quiver and majestically Blazing Jester died at the 100 metres mark to run fourth they were followed next in by Manitoba, hitting the line hard from Foolish Things. Vanilla Bean, stage play. Well back, Denmark in company with Tundra crossing in the flesh and major point near the tail. Photo finish. 
Now infield shimmer four board is not working, so we'll have to rely on the, uh, the, the TAB monitor. The judge has called for the photo finish. Chosen Valor in front. Blazing Jester looks short of passing, but he couldn't get past him. Majestically splashed the fence and a quiver out wide. Chosen Valor, to my eyes, lasted to win from a quiver and possibly majestically in that order. Standing by for the numbers, the winner, Chosen Valor, a two-year-old Bay Colt by Rise and Shine, I feel, has just lasted to win. No numbers official as yet. The infield semaphore board is not operating today. So we'll just have to rely on the, the TAB tape monitor and the judge to fill us in with the numbers. Matthew Carl riding this two-year-old. He was out of the gates very quickly, and it's been a darn fine performance because he's had a cross, and there it is. Four is first. A quiver's got second one. And number eight, majestically hitting the line hard, the inside third. Blazing Jester fourth, and Manitoba has run home very solidly. So it's 4-1 and 9. 4-1-9. Chosen Valor, a quiver, and majestically 419 confirmed by the judge. Chosen Valor, the winner of the race, he's by Rise and Shine, so that's where he gets his uh, precocious racing habits from. Rise and Shine was a very fast galloper, but unfortunately for favourite backers, it's a real blowout. He's paid $51.80 and $9.20. A quiver, $1.90. He's crying out for more ground, this son of Dane Hill. His run was very good today, and the blinkers certainly did the trick. They fired him out of the gates today. And he raced a lot more tractably coming around the bend and he stretched out magnificently well to concluding stages. And majestically, here's a one to follow too. A very good run by him, battling on well for third position. Yes, it was a good win by Chosen Valor and that knocked a few punters out early. And there's Michael Carr coming back there after a good performance. Uh, Matthew Carr rather. Uh, a quiver and majestically, Chosen Valor at 51.80 and $9.20. Right, now race one at Elwick, ahead of taking you to uh, Alan Thomas, it's 36. Flashing away, 2,000 metres. On their journey, Albia Ramey out OK towards the inside, will steady early in quiet style, led in the early part from Vesti over on the rails, Alinda and Risky out wide on the improves, Aquita is just behind the leading four early from the Bartered Bride, Shiasaki Fuss. Atty is next on the outside from Elbia Ramey, Megastar caught wide on the improve and then Madonna. Alfred still settling with three behind us. Spectrum lay Beal and no mystery. Two lengths last by the 1,600 metres. And Risky bowled along at the head of affairs about two lengths in front of Zalinda. Vesti is running third on the inside and the Bartered Bride moving up at court wide, 1,400 to go. Wonder Quiet Style settling fifth in the green with the white cap and one mega star and then Shea Starkey followed by Zaquita. Next at he travelling deep, about a length and a half behind them. Fuss three deep around Madonna and El Buramey on the fence. Wonder Spectrum. One further back, Alfred's Jewel, one delay, Beale, and no mystery last of all when they hit to the 1,000 metres. And the Bartered Bride moved up on the outside and put the neck clear from Risky. A length and a half away is Zalinda third on the inside of Atty going up on the outside and the chequered cap. One to Vesti, tucked away fifth on the rails and then Megastar, quiet style. Next year, Saki, a half length away on the fence. Fuss out wide, or oh, Zaquita's losing ground pretty rapidly there going past the 800 metres. Elbia Ramey's got up inside her on the inside and then Madonna, Spectrum coming out wide. Back behind them, no mystery, Lay Beal and Alfred Stewart is last in a fairly bunched field at the 600. And Risky, just the leader. Atty's been working hard all the while. Goes up three deep, the Bartered Bride in the centre. Vesti is just behind them on the inside and the white cap from Shearsaki. Zalinda needing it out. Or got shut it in there again by Megastar. Then Alfred Stewart running up near the inside and the blue cap. Vesti got through on the inside and shot to the lead at the 300 metres. Elbia Ramey's chasing her home there. And Alfred Stewart is running into a pocket. Here comes comes Leigh Beale with a big burst on the outside. Vesti the leader, but Leigh Beale is charging home. Vesti tackled by Leigh Beale, 100 to go. It's Leigh Beale going home the better. And Leigh Beale draws away to beat Vesti by about two lengths. Elburami third, Alfred's Jewel, unlucky fourth. And then Shearsaki, fast, quiet style. Spectrum never came into it out wider. Next, Madonna. And then Zaquita, who got a check before the turn, I think. Back behind her was no mystery. The Bartered Bride a good way back in company with Risky. And then Zalinda. Atty and Megastar, one of the last to greet the judge. 10-9 and a photo. Lay Beale storming home on the outside, ridden by Stephen Baster, has got up to win. Time two minutes and two seconds exactly. Number nine, second Vesti, who got the rails run to shoot to the lead, but Lay Beale overwhelmed her, and El Ramey holding on to third, 10-9 and seven. Vesti getting the rails run, but Lay Beale in the green with the white uh, diamonds was flashing home out wide and uh, this tall leggy Zabiel mare 
Gee, there's a few Zabils that go all right, aren't there? And here's another one. Trained by Leon Corstens, drew an outside gate, settled back, uh, but uh, really just swamped Vesti in the last little bit of the race. Alfred Stuhl should have run a place without any doubt. That's it getting through on near the inside with the blue cap. It got held up at the wrong moment. Zaquita was another unlucky runner. It, I don't know what happened to it, but it was losing ground rapidly before the home turn. Something must have uh, gotten its way or it it's, may have met a check. 10.97, numbers on the third. Good to see Stephen Baster. He had to uh, withdraw from all rides. I think it was on uh, Saturday last week. He, he does suffer pretty badly from asthma and it got the better of him and he, he had to throw in the towel last Saturday. He'll be tickled pink with this win. He's a good little lightweight rider. Loves his racing and he puts a lot into it and he deserves his uh, successes. And he's had a few too. He did pick up a, a ride in the group one today on Mushtack for Peter Hayes. Could be a, a lightweight chance at good odds. 10, 9 and 7. Lay Beal first. Leon Corstens, another Flemington winner. I think before today they'd won 18 out of the 28 races completed so far. It has been uh, a domination of Flemington trained horses and uh, they've already won two of the three that have been run today. So the locals have really cleaned them up. OK, totes are coming through. 16.50 and 4.70 for Leigh Beale. $1.90 for Vesti and $3.60 Al Biremi. Quinetta paid $40 even. Trifecta $1,039.90 with the running double on 2 and 10 returning $71.90. $71.90 for the running double. Good close-up shot of uh, Stephen Baster on Leigh Beale driving home. Victory in the third of the day. OK, a marvellous win there. Good thrill for young S. Basti. The light's still on. Starter right to the top rung of his ladder. Grabs the button. Set. Ready to jump. Racing. Excitement away pretty well near the inside. Slow to go Turtle Beach. Superbank and Evangeline with the gold cap into stride quickly. Excitement going fast and so too is Secret Heart and Biscuits off with the gold cap in the centre. A length away, Shereel, and two links to Turtle Beach. Linking up to the 600 mark. Evangeline on the inside, led from Super Bank, and out wide on the track, Secret Heart. The favourite two links away, Excitant. Fourth on the inside of Biskazoff. Two links away, Shereel, and two links to Turtle Beach. On the bend, 450 out. Evangeline with the paint, hugs the rail, and turns in front of Super Bank, and Secret Heart, three wide. Two links away, Excitant. Beasley looking for a run. He's going for one in the centre, but there's no room to manoeuvre there. And here's Shereel on the outside, and Biskazoff, the deepest runner. Favourite goes back to the fence. It's Evangeline at the 200 in front. Now Excitant's out and she's spreading fast. Excitant at the 100 moved up to Evangeline and they'll fight it out. It's Excitant on the outside and also Evangeline with Excitant really stretching the neck the last little bit. She's too good. Excitant wins from Evangeline. Third prize, Shereel, four links away. Four links to Biscas off Turtle Beach, then Super Bank. And Secret Heart gave in quickly. It was last. She had a bit on them, didn't she? Number three, Excitant, $1.80 and 120. She was held up. Beasley, he nearly came to the outside. He was just half manoeuvring to be on the inside of Secret Heart, but he could tell there was no run there, and he's done the right thing in the end. He's elected to go back to the inside, and then he's come around the leader, Evangeline, and she's finished full of running. Very impressed by the way she was able to pick up. Very hard for these youngsters in a sprint race of this nature to stop in their tracks and then find a gap and pick up as quickly as she did. But she's done it very, very nicely indeed. She set sail out after Evangeline. There was a length in front at the 200, and Shereel was running a race on the outside from Biskazov. But Excited has really picked up the bit the last little bit, and she's stormed to the front. Hasn't won by a big margin, but enough to swear by over Evangeline with the race fitness on her side fighting on doggedly and Shereel number seven third. The winner on the tote returns $1.80 and $1.20. Excitant, written by Dan Beasley. Evangeline, Craig Carmody second, two fifty. dollars Shereel number seven, no third. Quinella, four fifty. dollars Exacta, seven dollars. Trifecta, thirty dollars and sixty cents. Excitant, the winner, a two-year-old chestnut filly by Rory's Jester out of uh, Casamova, a Najinsky mare, so it's beautifully bred, or filly, and uh, Bill Mitchell, the trainer, and the raps this morning from uh, Wayne Harris were that uh, this is one of the best they've got in their stable, Excitant, and she hasn't let them down, ridden by Danny Beasley. And boy, oh boy, his strike rate's been terrific, Danny. 
from the last eight Metro meetings, he's ridden 11 winners. And it's been for a fair share of stables as well. Prenuptial on Tuesday for Graham Begg. He was aboard Bossy for Les Bridge on the Saturday prior to that, last Saturday week. Uh, on the Wednesday meeting, he won with Flagrant for John Hawkes. At the Rose Hill Saturday meeting on the 24th, he won with Ron Quinton's filly, Win City, and also Grey Dawn for Albert Stapleford. Then at the Wednesday meeting, he was successful with Bill Mitchell and Dino, and then Pine Puppet for Paul Perry, and he had a double before that for Bede Murray and Bart Cummings. So he's been shared around by all of the big stables, and he hasn't let them down. He's riding in superb form with that European look that he's now adopted, which is certainly paying dividends. Horses seem to really travel for him, and uh, he had that filly beautifully relaxed just off the leaders. He was in dire straits, I will say, at about the 300 metres mark because there was no run there, but he didn't panic. Uh, like a good rider that he is, he simply waited for the opportunity to come. It presented itself at about the 200 and excited much to the joy of favourite backers. We're back in business with the favourite home in race number two. $1.20 enjoyment at $8.60, $8.40 Oregon Star, $38 for Bridleman, Bolter at $14, $51 for number seven, New Kingston, race four of Flemington. Now, at this stage, they are moving in well for race number four at Flemington. Pretty close to a start. And uh, shortly to uh, Greg Miles. In fact, here he is now for race four at Flemington with might and power. He's 11 to two on Nick. And uh, six to one about Oregon Star if you wanted to try her. But uh, he opened tens on. He's got out to 11 to two on. I don't know if anyone uh, has been enticed to back him, but there's a good crowd here. Is going to give him a great roar without any doubt when they swing the corner. New Kingston lined in and the field is set. The champ drawn in two and the gates are back and Might and Power began well in company with Bolter and going up then is Bridal Man between them. Oregon Star dropping in next to last is Enjoyment and New Kingston last at the post the first time and Might and Power just comfortably leading. Cassidy leaning against him and he swings out of the straight at just a reasonable gallop early. Might and Power in front. Bridal Man is second three quarters away. Bolter trapped out a little is going to improve to sit up outside the champion. About a length and a half then to Oregon Star and Enjoyment racing together and two or three links to New Kingston uh, but going past the 2,000 metre mark now and Cassidy on might and power allowed to control it let a half a length to Boulder who's content to sit up there second on the outside a length and a half to Bridal Man third and one to Oregon Star in fourth placing then enjoyment over on the inside and last of all is New Kingston when they went past the 1800 metres and the leader is Might and Power, carving out comfortable fractions at this stage. He leads by a length to Bolter. A length and a half away is Bridal Man, third on the inside, and Oregon Star is fourth. One behind them is Enjoyment, and a neck away to New Kingston on the outside. And Cassidy, as you might uh, think, he's going to control the race completely. And at the 1,400 metres, he hasn't extended on Might and Power, and he leads by about a length to Bolter. Bridal Man is a length away, third, and a neck away, then Oregon Star on the outside. Enjoyment a length and a half away, with New Kingston at the back of the field. Field. Now they're heading to the 1200 metres and might and power at just a track gallop. Three quarters of a length clear. Boulder is second. Bridal Man on the fence is third. And Echo Oregon Star in fourth placing. One and a half behind those in the field then is Enjoyment on the inside. And New Kingston is last of all. 1000 metres to go. And it's uh, been Might and Power controlling it all the way, a half length in front of Boulder. Might and Power cruising down the side of the course with Bridal Man tucked in behind him and then Oregon Star on the outside. New Kingston has gone up to second last and enjoyment on the inside. They're nearing the turn now. Uh, when will Cassidy release the brakes on the great champ? It's Might and Power, just the leader. Hasn't let him go as he comes to the 600 metres. Just in front of Boulder now. And Oregon Star coming out three wide. Whip starting to flail behind the champ. As the idol of Australian racing turns the corner. It's Might and Power, the leader, just wobbling a little bit off the uh, fence. A run on the inside for Bridal Man. But at the 400 metres now. And Might and Power is the leader. Cassidy now starts to give him a little dig in the ribs. And away he goes at the 300. Here comes the great champion, Might and power three links clear now from Oregon Star trying hard and then Boulder and Bridal Man but the idol of Australian racing might and power let go in the last 150 and away he goes the champ the great champ might and power wins it well by about six or seven second is Oregon Star from Boulder Bridal Man enjoyment and New Kingston Jimmy Cassidy just letting him do what he needed to do in the last 200 meters as the champion of Australian racing 
went right away from them. Number one, Might and Power, creating a weight carrying record in the race. He's 60 kilos, eclipsing that of uh, the weight that Hyperno carried to victory in 1980. Oregon Star battling on Gamely in second position, but Might and Power living up to his name and his reputation. Balter was third, one, three, and six. Little more than a track gallop for this wonderful racehorse. And let's hope on what we've seen here that uh, we've uh, seen this horse farewelling our shores for a little while because he would be one of the greatest chances ever that Australia's had uh, to win a Japan Cup. Perhaps if not there, then maybe Dubai. Uh, but we have a wonderful racehorse in our midst here unanimously the best we've had since uh, Kingston Town. He's posted now his 15th career record from 31 starts, seven of Group 1 and three now at Group 2 level. It's a third victory in the race for Jim Cassidy, who scored on Colour Page in 1986 and Savage Toss in 1990. Well, fancy picking up $98,500 for that. The time will be interesting. 2.38.2, which is 5.2 seconds outside of the record set by Korchaban. A proud man there, Nick Moratus. The horse uh, doing no more than uh, what he would have expected him to do. And Cassidy waited for a long, long time before letting him go in the straight. He, he could have won by any margin that Cassidy wanted him to, but he really didn't let him go until well past the 400. And it wasn't until the 200 marker that was reached that he really let him sool along. He was all bursting aggression coming around the turn, might and power. He wanted to do it, but Cassidy uh, realised that, oh there boy, we've got these guys covered. We don't have to do too much. He didn't have to do too much. And he thrashed them. Away he went. This is a part of the race that might and power really enjoyed. The last 200, able to let loose with that gangling stride still. You almost still hold your breath when you watch him legs flailing everywhere but he widens his margin and let's face it these were moderate opposition compared to what he's been meeting of late and he's dealt with them the way he should a dollar ten and a dollar for those brave enough to do it two dollars for oregon star no third dividend for bolter quinella's paid 240 the trifecta 1030 and the running double numbers 10 and 1 19 dollars even Jimmy Cassidy reunited with his uh, favourite horse and beaten on him in uh, this preparation. And he remains, of course, unbeaten at Flemington with his nose victory in the Melbourne Cup, his only other start at headquarters. He'll get a great reception. There's no doubt about that. He is, as I mentioned in the call, the idol of Australian racing right now. Melbourne racing fans love a champion. They take them to heart, and there's been a good crowd turn up here. Here's Might and Power. We've witnessed another super win by an outstanding racehorse. He's dealt with them the way they should have been dealt with. He's trounced them and could have won by more. And it just might be that we're farewelling him to conquer Tokyo, let's hope we are, is what a wonderful uh, ambassador he would be for Australian racing. His 15th career victory from 31 starts, continuing the unbelievable run of success for Zabil.